no stabilization going on here. Can I help you? The Nikon Z8, uh, a camera review, oh, yeah. It's not mine, it's, it's I, uh, I rented it. What's happening people? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So as promised, I'm coming back at you with my favorite camera as of late, the Nikon Z8. And you're like, Dom, is that is that really your favorite camera right now? Or are you just saying that? You're just like doing a YouTube thing. I'm serious, folks. I would tell you otherwise. I have been insanely impressed with this Nikon Z8 so far. And I guess I shouldn't be that surprised given how impressed I was with the Z9. The Z8 is going to give us a ton of that same great stuff that we got with the Z9 a slim down body and a couple of the choices that come with slimming down that body. But why I'm so stoked on the Z8 is because the Z8 is giving me everything I loved about the Z9 and actually excluding one thing I didn't love so much, the size, which is going to come in handy today because today, starting right now, I'm going to be spending 24 hours with the Nikon Z8. Eight. Hopefully this is going to give me enough time to shoot the Z8 over a couple of like diverse shooting scenarios and then I'm going to retreat back to share some of my thoughts about just my experience shooting on the Nikon Z8. Like workflow things, maybe any hiccups I ran into, just like the stuff that you can't necessarily just go and look up. And also very excitingly somewhere along this video I'll be introducing a new member to the Lens Pro to Go, Lens Rentals content creator family so super excited about that so you're not going to want to miss a second tape your eyeballs open use that strange device from a clockwork orange but before we paint the town nikon yellow i actually have a few quick setup notes i want to go over in camera before we head out one of the big differences coming down from the nikon z9 to the z8 is going to be the media situation the z8 is going to have one slot for a cf express type b and one slot for an sd card which i'm actually using to shoot this right now. That's coming down from the dual CF Express slots of the Z9, but this is actually something I really like about the Z8, and I'll tell you why. I like that because that's actually going to incentivize me to shoot different types of media on different types of cards. I had the idea of only shooting video to CF Express Type B and only shooting photo to SD card. That way, later on down the line, when I'm offloading all of this footage, it's, it's like way less of a mental load. I know the video I shot is going to be on CF Express, and I know the photo photo is going to be on SD. Before I head out shooting today, I'm actually going to go into the Z8 and designate which type of media gets shot to which type of card, which is really easy to do on this camera. I'm going to go into my photo bank right here and hit primary slot selection, make sure that's on SD card. Same thing with video. I'm going to go over to video and hit destination right here and make sure that is on CF Express. And the neat thing is I actually didn't have to switch in and out of video modes. The Z8 is going to keep all of those menus new settings like partitioned, which by the way is like a total must for the hybrid workflow. So the Z8 gets hybrid brownie points already and we haven't even shot anything. So let's hit it. All right, so I'm here at like one classic like on the water sort of river spot where I'm bound to get some sort of woodland critter or majestic beast. But the majority of the stuff I've taken already has been on this Z70-200, which is like a stellar lens. And just like my first couple of notes, just like handling wise, like it's definitely on the robust, heavier side of things, especially with this lens. I find myself just like weight wise wanting to sort of like slouch over and find a place to rest my elbow and stuff. But I absolutely don't have to. It's totally a perfect thing as a handheld experience stabilization scenario with this setup right here is unreal so that's all buttery smooth no complaints unfortunately that does lead me to one pretty decently big drawback that I just discovered when I set out to do this whole session I was actually really excited to adapt some of these older Nikon photo lenses just to see if I could get like sort of a different look maybe it'd be nice for portrait or in a cine application for video or something like that but I was like great the IBIS in the Z8 is going to handle that lack 
of stabilization from these lenses perfectly. It's gonna look awesome. Turns out, I don't know if it's just using lenses through the adapter or if it's just Nikon Z lenses, but it seems like the IBIS is just totally defaulted off if it's not being used in unison with one of these Nikon Z lenses. So it's like either all the way and super good or none at all. So I suppose I would like a little more like granular control of the stabilization scenario going on in the Z8. Is that something you can address in firmware later on down the line? I don't know, but now I'm gonna be a little more cautious to use these Nikon photo lenses that I wanted. So that last outing went like so-so. I probably got some good stuff. It was probably like mostly user error, but there was one thing that I think definitely failed me. My autofocus totally just like pooped out on me there on a couple of those geese landing shots where they come like crashing down into the water. I had a great opportunity to get a couple of those in like a high speed photo burst, but I know I totally missed focus on a couple of those. Even though I was in continuous autofocus, tracking was on, it was in auto. I tried switching it to just animals only. I tried switching the AF zone so don't really know what happened there, but I definitely took a ton of pictures like when I go back and eventually offload this stuff. But one thing the Z8 is gonna do that's actually gonna make that process a lot easier is like this burst image review that it's got going on. So if I go back and hit playback, we're using the D-pad right here, we'll go individual picture by picture. But if I hit left and right on the joystick right here, it'll actually jump to the last photo in a burst of photos. And that super duper comes in handy when you're shooting 120 frames per second burst. So one up, and one down from that little river session with the Z8. So time to fly out of here. All right, location number two for the day. Decided to hop on over to Harvard Stadium to see if I could get some more fast-moving subjects. People shooting hoops, skateboarding. I saw a crazy drum circle happening earlier. Gonna try to be testing out that 20, 30, 60, even ridiculous 120 frames per second burst shooting going on. But I just realized I'm not really going to be getting much like low light or really any nighttime content whatsoever with the Z8 during this little trial. And then I got a great idea. What better opportunity could I get to shell off some work to somebody else. I'm just kidding. Well, not totally kidding. I'm like halfway serious, but I am taking this as an opportunity to plug in Andrew, who is the new host of the Lens Rentals YouTube channel. He just released his first couple of videos. I'm going to link those in the description of this video. He is also working on a Nikon Z8 video, probably as we speak. And I actually asked him specifically to go and try to get some low light slash high ISO sample videos and sample photo that's going to go in his video. So if you are curious about how the Nikon Z8 is going to perform, well, 
shameless plug. What's going on? My name is Andrew and I am over at the Lens Rentals channel. Dom asked me to hop on here and give you guys a few notes on the Nikon Z8 and its low light night photography capabilities. I've been really enjoying it, but there are a couple things that I need you to know. First off, the ISO range is pretty large from 64 to 25,600. On top of that, you can actually boost your ISO through its software all the way down to 32 up to 100 thousand this camera can almost see in the dark without being a night vision camera the five axis image stabilization is amazing when you're shooting at those lower shutter speeds and you don't want a lot of camera shake and the one thing i will note is that if you are trying to shoot at night you want to make sure that you're manual focusing the autofocus had a little bit of issue unless you're using its autofocus assist you're going to get a bright green flash on your subject and you're going to stick out like a sore thumb. That's all I have for you here. If you wanna check out more, go to the Lens Rentals channel. Make sure you give Dom his props. He's an amazing, talented dude. He's putting out great content. So hang out on the Lens Protego channel, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And then come hang out with me so we can all become uh, best friends. All right, Dom, that's all I got. Peace. Andrew is awesome, by the way. He's super talented. And I look forward to working with him. So anyways, let's hit the pack. I was doing a, I was doing a Boston thing, I think. Pretty much the last stop on the tour this is like the last checklist item i had before i ship it home and offload all this stuff i've taken on the z8 for the past 24 hours full transparency this stretched a little further than 24 hours but anyways this is the last thing i wanted so if you haven't noticed already i have actually switched over and doing myself like filming on the z8 now and i've switched them Yep, okay, good, Whew. I switched the mic over and I've got that in my little breast pocket. I also switched the vibration reduction on the Z8 from normal to sport because I figured it's getting like a little extra kind of jostle right now than when I was just like hand holding it. So this is just one thing I wanted to test out. Although, as you might've known already, I've covered this about the Z9, but the Z8 has the same screen design. You're not gonna get that fully articulating flip out screen. That allows you to do a type of front facing filming like this makes that a lot easier. For example, Example, I'm doing this whole take and I don't even know if the autofocus is working so time to end this recording real quick see if I'll be majorly disappointed but other than the front facing stuff I kind of just want to like bring you along with me as I walk down the street that has like a lot of tacky advertisements but also some cool murals what's this this little hidden hidden mural what's this doing hidden back here oh there's art all over the place here it's just you like wouldn't even necessarily know this is here this is awesome
There's something I hate, but also loved about those mannequins. Each one of them had like their own attitude. Okay. Oh, Crossed the street illegally. Ooh, this house has a cool blue door. 